greetings and once again there's a ton of packages here from you and I'm going to open them so let's open them let's start small here starting with this one coming from Bill from Indy ah here's the radio shark he promised me ah yes here's the radio shark <laughs> by Griffin. Another great idea from Griffin. Yeah, this it's pretty much just a shark fin shaped uh, USB radio, I guess, for your computer. I am planning a video on USB, well not USB, just radio computer peripherals in general. So thank you very much, Bill from Indy. Got one here from Dawn. And look, there's a winky smiley face on there. Clint saw this at an estate sale and thought of you. Maybe you can replace your Windows Maze screensaver now. The Windows Maze screensaver will never be replaced, um, but this is a wonderful addition to my screensaver collection. The Duke Nukem 3D screensaver and entertainment pack in immaculate sealed condition. This is not easy to find. Thank you very much, Don. It's going on my Duke Nukem shelf. I've got a little one here from Dorset in the UK. That is the place, not the person. I don't actually know who it's from since it doesn't say. All right, this one comes to me from Merlin. It did make it to me across the pond in time. It's a Yamaha daughter board. Ooh. No steampunk here, but it is a wonderful little daughter board. Check that out. A DB50XG. Never used one of these. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much. Got one here from Brian. What is this? <laughs> it's Viagra. Um, <laughs> oh, sweet. Well, I do have a boner for computer mice. Oh, dude, this is neat. It's got a floppy disk. It's a, it's a mouse and like Viagra software or something. Talk about odd. 2002. Well, thank you, sir. This is supremely weird. Go in here from Kenneth. Mm, of course. Hmm. HP organizer things, and OmniGo. Is that what this is? <laughs> so it is. This is an HP OmniGo 100, it appears. These are pretty neat. It's just like a little personal organizer thingy. Uh, I don't actually believe I have this model. I do have another one like this, but that's very neat. Thank you very much, Kenneth. What is this card in here? Ah, one megabyte SRAM. How cool is that? <laughs> oh, that's super neat. Got another one here from Kenneth. Hey, now, this is a thing. Logitech Wingman Force Feedback Mouse. <laughs> oh, now that's my kind of oddware. Thank you very much, Kenneth. This is fantastic. The fact that it's in the box, too. Let's open this one from Peter. Mm, this is quite a quite a lengthy message here. He also has a YouTube channel, which I haven't checked out yet, but that's what it is. All right, so it looks like we have a boxed copy of Music Ace 2, which I've never heard of, by Harmonic Vision. I, I genuinely have no idea what this does. It looks like a music learning thing. Ooh, that's neat. Copy of Microsoft Works. This is the Windows 95 version and from 2001, it looks like. Oh yeah, and here we go. This is the thing he contacted me about initially. This is the GeForce MX4000 graphics card from NVIDIA. 64 meg AGP card in the box. This is a classic card. I was very much wanting one of these back in the day. And uh, here we go, and I can try it out. This is, that's super cool. I love uh, collecting video cards in the box. So thank you very much. Got one here from V Rambos. Maybe it's Ramboz, not entirely sure. Vicky, oh, it's from Vicky. Okay, sorry this took so long to get out to you. Life got busy, that's yeah, okay. I'm never in any rush to get this stuff, so, <laughs> you know. Aha, uh -huh. that's interesting. That is definitely a different box than what we got here in the US. It just says Harvest of Souls. It doesn't actually say Shivers 2. Bizarre. I wonder why they went with that. So here's the original Shivers. And while I know it wasn't like the most successful thing in the world, it was obviously successful enough to get a sequel. And here they called it Shivers 2 Harvest of Souls. I don't know why the UK wouldn't, wouldn't have that title or, you know, that, that's just weird to me. Thank you very much, Vicky. Got one here from Reina. Mm. Hi, Clint. Found this in the back of a storage closet and thought you might like it. From Zero Domon. Well, thank you. Mm, okay, this is the Apple presentation system in 
a rather pristine looking box. Turns your television into a multimedia presentation system. I guess it's just like a video output kind of thing. It's gotta be more involved in this. This thing is heavy. What does this do? Congratulations on your purchase of the Apple presentation system. Apple computer worked with focus enhancements to tailor its video conversion tech for Apple Macs. Regards, Apple computer. I, uh, I don't even wanna mess with this in case I wanna do like a video. I'm gonna leave it in perfect shape as it is. So uh, thank you very much for sending this. Got one here from Alan, apparently. He's got his thank you right on the outside. That's nice. And you're welcome. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Ford Simulator 3 for EGA. This is one of the versions of Ford Sim that I do not have. And yes, I collect these. And um, this is from Software Labs. They were a shareware distributor from Culver City, California. I have a lot of their discs. Um, Ford actually released these for free. I reviewed Ford Sim 2 a long time ago, but I've been meaning to revisit them. I kind of want to just do them all in one video at some point. Anyway, thank you very much, Alan. Okay, we got another one here from Adult Swim. I had one from them last time. Okay, so I got some information and codes here for Duck Game. I've never played it. I did actually try out Kingsway that they sent me last time. It's a really neat idea. Um, I'm probably not gonna do like a video on it immediately, but it's cool. I've never played Duck Game though. What is this? Guess it needs batteries, whatever it is. Oh no, it has batteries. Well, that's a thing. <laughs> this one is from Braun, or at least I think it is. Maybe that's the location in the Netherlands. I don't know. We'll see when we open it. Hmm. Yeah, no note or anything, but we do have an interesting card here. Insanely interesting. This is the Hard Sid Quattro, a card from the year 2000 that lets you use Sid chips from the Commodore 64 on your PC. Multiple SID chips, in fact. It's such a bizarre, odd little device. I actually don't know much about it, so I'm gonna have to do some research and uh, do a video on this for sure at some point. This is amazing. Thank you very much. All right, got one here from Rachel. Ooh, it's a Casio FX 7000G. This is one of the premier landmark graphing calculators from the mid 80s, late 80s, I don't remember exactly. I, I mentioned it in my um, calculator history video. I, I didn't dive into the history of graphic calculators too much in that one because that was more about the calculator wars of the 70s. Um, but yeah, this is, um, wow, such a cool device. I'm gonna have to get it working. Thank you very much, that's awesome. All right, got one here from Jared. It's apparently fragile and I shouldn't drop it. Whoops. Now, there's nothing I could do to this that the post office hadn't done already. I'd be a drowning in graphics cards, monitors, and mice shaped like stock cards by the time you open this. Uh, yeah, condolences, I appreciate it. But yeah, let's uh, let's check this out. This, this sounds really cool. <laughs> oh, dude, IBM Personal System 2 Model L40SX, PS to it. What a strangely specific mug. This is <laughs> it's for just this one model of PS2 laptop. That is, oh, that's my kind of nerdy. Looks like he also included some Bigelow T constant comment. That's appropriate for YouTube. Thank you very much. Okay, I got one here from Kenneth in Texas. Apparently this is a drop shipment of some kind. Let's see what it is. ESP touch system. Extrasensory perception? Is this gonna be like psychic oddware? No, it's just a friggin' weird touchpad. That's pretty cool. I don't know how that's gonna work, but I mean, in theory it should. And it has a coffee button, or tea. I'm gonna say coffee. I don't have any uh, devices with a coffee button, so thank you very much, sir. Got one here from Brian with a Y. Oh. Mm, video cards. <laughs> this is a Power VR Apocalypse 3D, four megabyte Power VR card. This does indeed work with MechWarrior 2's Power VR version, as well as what is this? Oh yeah, it's Ultimat Race Pro. <laughs> it has the at sign in the name because it was the mid '90s. That's just what you did. But uh, yeah, check it out, man. 3D that is completely different from pretty much any other 3D device that I've covered. It uses its own. Uh, API, I guess. I, I don't really know a whole lot about PowerVR because I've never used one. Thank you very much. This is awesome. 
Hey, looks like we got some pizza here. This is from Glitch Artwork. He has an awesome store in Canada. You can order things online. I actually have one of his things already, but you'll see what he does. Here, check this out. There we go. There's the store, glitchartwork.com. High-tech lo-fi art. I uh, have another one of his pieces that's based on the Rampage arcade game. And he decided to send me this one that he did um, after I did my duck hunt video. <laughs> Check that out, man. I just like these. Um, it's just little shadow boxes with different artwork at different levels. So it has a really cool sense of depth to it. And they just, I don't know. I really like this style of thing that he does. So uh, check him out if you'd like. Got another drop shipment here from Kenneth in Texas. <laughs> 8D. <laughs> okay, I've seen 4D mice, but never an 8D mouse. This is stupid. Oh, it's wonderful. Okay, so there was this weird thing in the late 90s, early 2000s where like, the internet was all whatever, so you had to have internet devices for everything. And the 4D mouse had, typically they had two scroll wheels. One went vertical and one did horizontal, so you could quickly scroll web pages, which was a big deal because, you know, you were often running in like 640 by 480 or 800, 600, and web pages were getting bigger, so scrolling, I don't know, people were like dying because they were scrolling too much. What this 8D one does though, it looks like it just has extra buttons for all sorts of stupid crap. I, oh man, thank you very much. Got one here, shipped to me from or through guitareffectspedals.com. There we go. From Julian, hello Clint, big fan of the show. Well, thank you very much. I hope you find out more about this laptop. Please do more videos about portable computers and Atari 8 bits. Yeah, I'd like to. Oh yeah, always be selling. Cool sticker. There you go. Here's the power adapter that goes to whatever this is, the model TSA-1. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is gonna be really strange. So, check this out, okay? This is a computer by Ultra. I don't know what this is. We were trying to figure it out, um, you know, over email, just kind of looking at stuff online. Man, that stickers everywhere. But yeah, check it out. This is, this is just, what is this? It's a pretty cool design. I like the little, uh, you know, trackball right there. We've got, I'm assuming, mouse buttons on the side. A three and a half inch disk drive. Proprietary power adapter, which goes to that. So I'm glad it has that. But yeah, I mean, check it out. Model TS34X. And there's just, like, precious little information on this. So is this, like, a random clone or, you know, just generic laptop and they just stuck this ultra name on there i don't know and i hope i can figure out more about this either way thank you very much for sending this my way truly a strange piece of hardware got one here from aaron one troll face packing peanut <laughs> anyway yeah this is aaron from silicon classics he has an awesome channel and uh yeah thank you for the stuff and the notes all right, we are back. A dinosaur's story. Yes, an incredible adventure of prehistoric proportions. I genuinely didn't know that this was a game, but it is, and it's for the PC, so that's fascinating. Awesome power in the Indie Zone 2. Okay, this is some uh, silicon graphics stuff. <laughs> Check it out, it's got Doom. That's friggin' cool. And a couple more edutainment things. We have Music Gnomes Music here by The Learning Company. This is another one that I had never heard of. And he was like, hey, do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, I've never heard of it. And lastly, this Capstone CD Game Kids Collection, An American Tale and Trolls. That's pretty neat. Thank you very much, Aaron. Hope you're doing well. Got one here from Dustin. Oh my, what's this? I see Trapper Keeper. CX81 Computer Information. Oh. <laughs> Dude, yes. Okay, not only is this like a bunch of printed out stuff from the place that this was bought from, but here are the receipts for this, what's in the box. This is a ZX81, and I, I'm saying ZX instead of ZX because this is the American version from Sinclair Research in Nashua, New Hampshire. Man, any kind of paperwork like this that establishes providence and what not for any kind of old computers great 1983 the fact that it's in an 80s trapper keeper folio is even better ah oh, man so here we have the uh, infamous uh, ram adapter here the zx 16k <laughs> it's the usa version this is wild still made in england though got an assortment of software here including 
Mega Mind by Orbite Software for the Timex Sinclair, uh, Sinclair 1000 and ZX81. Some compilations here, something called Mazogs, The Flight Simulator. I actually found a copy of this in a thrift store a long time ago. I don't even know if I still have it. Uh, ZX81 Classics, Super Invasion, and Wall Busters. And there we go. There's the little teeny tiny computer itself. Isn't it cute? ZX81 USA. Never actually seen an American one like this. <laughs> and lastly, the Macmillan Computer Literacy Teacher's Edition book. Dude, this is going to be a gold mine of early computing stuff for sure. <laughs> Look at that ridiculous thing. And it doesn't stop there. Here's another one from Dustin. Mmm, a Sinclair thingy here. Check it out. There's the printer that goes with it. And is this... Not entirely sure if that's for the computer or does the printer need its own separate power? Never actually used one of these. I believe these are thermal printers or something like it. Check out that funky paper. Always wanted to try one of these out. Yeah, I guess this is probably the power adapter for the computer then. Dang, this is cool. Thanks so much, man. Got one here from Adam. Let's see, I'm a new viewer. I'm thoroughly enjoying your videos. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, well, I hope this is legal. <laughs> well, this is definitely a first. These appear to be evidence bags. Um, check it out. I mean, it's got, he filled these things out. He put what it is, from where it's from, case numbers, inventory numbers. Pretty fantastic, dude. So that's how it goes together. I guess we just tear it open. Like, what's the proper procedure here? I feel like this is a police quest and I'm gonna die if I do it wrong. Oh, dude, sweet. This is uh, Ignition. This is the game from Interplay. It's a really interesting top-down sort of micro-machines racing game for MS-DOS and Windows 95. Very cool. Hey, there we go. It's uh, slightly beat up, but nonetheless an original printing of Sim Safari. Let's just go ahead and finish the job here. Oh, that's very cool. I've never actually run across this original printing box. Um, I should be able to flatten it out and whatnot. <laughs> what the heck? Bibleland.com, an incredible simulated world wide web experience that takes kids back to Bible times. Does this, does this mimic the web? It doesn't actually... What the heck is this? What if there was a World Wide Web in Bible times? This is what a web browser might look like and how it might work. Imagine a homepage for people from the Bible. Dang, this is just bizarre and absolutely down my alley. I collect really weird religious stuff and this is a, uh, this is really friggin' weird, I gotta say. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I, I'm super curious to try this actually, holy crap. Or holy webpage, I guess. Got one here from Christopher with a K. Well, it was with a K on the front, now it's with a C, but that's okay. I hope you find some use for this old video card. Well, I'm sure I will. Ah, yes, the Canopus... Canopus? I've never actually said that out loud before now. <laughs> Pure 3D! The 4 megabyte texture memory with 2 megabyte frame buffer. Oh, man! It's a 3DFX card and it's still sealed. That alone is awesome, but what a strangely minimal kind of box. I mean, compare this to what other video cards were doing at the time. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, this pure 3D, that's all you need to know. Got one here from Monster Squishy, apparently. That's what it says in the box. Okay, it's all this. Oh man, I remember these. This is the Webroot Internet Essentials. These were expensive. $70 in Best Buy back in 2004. Comes a Spy Sweeper window washer, spam shredder, and pop-up washer. I remember using window washer uh, quite a lot. I just had a free one that I downloaded. I wonder what the difference is. Hmm. Okay, so we got a manual here for Dabbler 2, and I guess the CD to go with it, the Art Tutor Inside Your Computer, from Macintosh and Windows. That's a new one on me. In Art We Trust. Yeah, I trust it too. Sounds good. 
And finally, we got Microsoft Classic board games in the original big box with the Cop USA sticker there from the year 2000. That's nostalgic, and so is this. I remember messing around with it, like pre-installed on various computers, but I've never owned it, and I have never even seen the box for it since it was in stores back then, so thanks a lot. Well, this is different. This is from Wesley in New Zealand. Don't get too many things from there. Oh my. We got some games. Oh man. man, I love getting games from this part of the world. Australia and New Zealand got some interesting exclusive releases. Here's one of them, V8 Challenge by EA Sports. It's got the Holden very proudly on front there. And uh, apparently it has an amazing car and track detail. That's really cool. I wonder if this is similar to like, actually, I don't know what this is similar to. I've never heard of it. Oh, here we go. I've got a copy of Chrono Master here by Capstone. This is a very different box than the one that I have. Got some things in keep cases here. E.T. the Adventure Game. What the heck is that? Pizza Frenzy. What the heck is that? Multicoon 2 Deluxe. That's kind of a classic. Well, sort of. And Alien Shooter Vengeance. The arcade shooter game. <laughs> this is a 1C release. I have a few of those from like uh, Russia and whatnot, but I don't have this one. Oh, here we go. Something from SSI. This is Prophecy of the Shadow, a single character role-playing adventure, as opposed to the ones with multiple characters at once, such as Eye of the Beholder. Dude, yes, love some SSI. And lastly, we have Disciples Sacred Lands Gold Edition. I've never played this, but I have been intrigued by it, just mainly because of the graphics and like, you know, it's an isometric um, turn-based strategy game, and that's just kind of my thing nowadays. I, I don't know. I really have grown to like those kind of games more than a lot of real-time strategy. I, I don't know. It just it appeals to me. So thank you very much for all these. Got one here from Rainer. Huh. Apparently he got me something from shopgoodwill.com. That's where uh, a lot of Goodwill stores post items that they receive up for auction. I haven't bought something from Shop Goodwill in like eight years. Packaged that up pretty well though. Check that out. It's a realistic clock uh, radio. This is the Radio Shack brand of things and that's actual wood. That's not just a veneer. Yeah, I gotta admit, I'm not normally into owning these things, but this one does have a really cool design and it's in better shape than most of them I find at my Goodwills. Got one here from Matthew. Oh man, it's an assortment of things. What is this? Whoa, dude, he's telling me about all the things he included. Holy crap. God, did this guy write me a novel or something? Yeah, apparently he did. It's like a, gra a graphic novel. Wow, dude. Look at all this. Look at all this. I'm just going to show it all because, goodness. Well, that is officially one of the most interesting letters I've ever received. See, it's a copy of the game Desperados, Wanted Dead or Alive. <laughs> a jewel case version of uh, Stephen Beastie's Stowaway. Yeah, these uh, incredible cross sections by DK are really cool. I've been trying to get the box for this because I actually do have the CD on its own already, but that's really cool. It reminds me that I need to track down that box. I did not have this though. Check that out. These are what those uh, the software from DK was based on. So this is the cross sections. I used to absolutely love checking these out from the library and just like staring at the detail uh, because the detail is mind boggling, <laughs> even today. It's just this wonderful, large print, high quality art. These are so cool. They'll definitely come in handy whenever I get around to covering the software. And check these out. I guess these are some of his uh, graphic novels too that he's done, The White Rat, Luke and Lena, and Skull. Oh, The Fallen. Oh yeah, that's a thoroughly fascinating package. Thank you very much, sir. Got one here from William. Oh, I see compact logos. Oh, how awesome is this? This is a compact LTE 386 laptop. The awesome like blue LCD. I have always thought that compact made some of the coolest portable and laptop computers from the eighties, but I didn't own any of them. Uh, this I believe is the very first one I've ever had the pleasure of having. Probably going to be featuring this in a video sometime because this appears to be in pretty good shape, all things considered. I'll need to find a power adapter, of course, but still, that's great. It's got a disc in here. P 
PC Plus self-booting. Hmm. All right. Wow. Thanks so much, dude. This is great. I don't know who this one's from. It does not say on the box. Hmm. Apparently it is from Michael Jr. So I was going through some old books and ran across these. Nearly antique programming books. Ooh. And some late 80s Battletech books. <laughs> Dude, yes. Some other things too. Apparently a mouse here, it looks like. It's a Microsoft trackball. We have here uh, Football by Sublogic. I've never actually played this. That's fascinating. Exploring multimedia. Dang, I remember these. Check out the computer on the front of there. I believe that is a Hyundai <laughs> computer. Yes, Hyundai made computers. Um, but yeah, these are awesome. What kind of games they have listed here? Examples of software. Encarta 97, Way Things Work 2.0, Logical Journey of the Zumbinis, Tomb Raider, Cinemania 97, Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker, NASCAR Racing 2, and oddly enough, Phantasmagoria, a Puzzle of Flesh. <laughs> what a strange selection for, I mean, these are like books made for kids. You know, Phantasmagoria, there's a game you should check out. Oh man, check these Battletech novels out. We got Warrior, Unguard, Heir to the Dragon, and uh, wolves on the border. What? The elementary Atari. <laughs> the whole thing has a wood grain finish on its own. That's pretty impressive. Mmm, programming. Let's see, we have mapping the Atari. Compute's first book of Atari. That's awesome. Uh, designs from your mind with Atari graphics. And animation games and sound for the IBM PC. Dude. I'm gonna use these to make my own games. Not even kidding, I wanna try that sometime. Anyway, thank you very much. These are super cool things. Got one here from Brandon. Clint, this was my grandmother's and I'm told she washed a lot of, wasted, <laughs> washed, wasted a lot of time back on it back in the day. Okay, cool. Whoa, it is an Intellivision. In really nice shape, all things considered. It's missing, missing one of the little discs, which is very common. In fact, the one that I have is in much worse shape, and it is missing one of the discs as well. So I'll probably take the parts from that one to restore this one and to go along with it. Some boxed games, including Astro Smash, Space Hawk, Major League Baseball. Sports games were a huge selling point on the Intellivision. You're like, oh, look how much better it is than the Atari. Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack. Tron Deadly Discs. That's really cool. And uh, Night Stalker. Never played that one. Well, thank you very much. Your grandma had good taste. <laughs> I will definitely get some enjoyment out of these. The boxes are rapidly getting bigger. This one here is from Brad. Wow, just a whole box of goodies. Okay, let's see what's in this McGregor bag. Ah, well, that's a thing. <laughs> Dang, that's a cool mechanism. It's a Polaroid impulse as, f sorry, autofocus. But yeah, that's neat. I like Polaroids. You did not skimp out. These are not cheap. I've been buying some of these for uh, my other Polaroid Spectra. These are impossible films of all different types. <laughs> Dang, thanks a lot, man. Oh, now there we go. This is a Commodore US-8 calculator. Such a neat thing. Uh, Pre-computing Commodore is a fascinating story. Perhaps I'll tell it one day. And last but not least, some true oddware. This is the Acer Future keyboard. Uh, <laughs> it's like a keyboard split in three parts and it has, I think, a mouse in the middle. Um, Man, it's like if the Microsoft Natural went horribly wrong. <laughs> and just more 90s than I thought possible. Uh, that is pretty great. Thank you very much for sending me these things, Brad. Got a pretty large one here from Bryce. Well, the box says purses. That's what's written on there, but I can't imagine that's what it is. Look forward to more great videos. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to you watching them and hopefully enjoying. Holy crap, this is, this is impressive. First up here is F-19 Stealth Fighter, a classic flight sim by Microprose. Bill Budge's pinball construction set in rather excellent shape. I'm assuming this is the PC version. Now this is the Mac version. Interesting. Did not have that. 
Ah, yes. The Blue and the Gray. A classic simulation by Impressions. This is an interesting box. Check that out. It's got some depth going on. This is Mountain Man, A New Beginning. Never heard of that. <laughs> Here we have John Elway's quarterback, a rather early entry into licensed or celebrity-endorsed football games for computers. Ah, yes. Power Monger. That's a really cool box. Did not have this one. Yeah, the computer, or deluxe computer edition of Scrabble. The new Windows version. Ooh. Mm, computer version of Risk. This is the Windows version as well. That's a really nice condition box, at least. Oh, this game is rough. As in, like, difficult. <laughs> this is The Immortal by Will Harvey. Yeah, you're not immortal at all. This is a really uh, tough game, but really cool. Love that box art. Whoa, dude, Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective. It's one of those ICOM adventures, uh, interactive video mysteries. Volume three. That's awesome. Don't have any of these. Oh yeah, here we go. Delta Force Land Warrior. I do have the original Delta Force, but didn't have this one. LucasArts Air Combat Classics. Did not even know that this compilation was a thing. Oh, that's awesome. Hugo's House of Horrors, and this is the personal companion release. They, they released a lot of really awesome things in these little packages. And a lot of times they were like registered. In fact, yeah, right there. It says not shareware, complete program, which is weird because the Hugo games were released for free anyway, but this is the not shareware version. Gunship by Microprose, attack helicopter simulation, uh, simulating, of course, the Apache AH-64A in this case. What a cool game. <laughs> the Three Stooges by Cinemaware. I've always wanted to try this one out, and I've never had the chance. Uh, but I, I will now, and that's a really nice condition box. It's the PC version. Oh, here we go. We have a Lynx box. <laughs> I, I, you know, I know it probably seems like I have a lot of these already, and I do, but there's so many of these championship courses. And this is one for the original Lynx, which I don't have many expansions for this. There we go. Here's Lynx LS to go with this. This is the 1997 edition, so much later than the original Lynx. Here we go. Some more Lynx Championship courses. We have the Bountiful Golf Club, as well as Mauna Kea, Island of Hawaii. And believe it or not, I didn't have these two. Although, I have to, I just, uh, man, I'm going to get the full collection one of these days. Oh, man. Okay, I've been looking for this for a long time, this particular box. The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. This is just a really fascinating adventure game. The case of the serrated scalpel. I've never actually played this one. I think the only one that I have is a uh, case of the rose tattoo or whatever it's called. Um, I actually gave that box away recently, but this one I'm not giving away. I'm keeping this. Oh, finally. I know this is going to make some of you happy. This is Museum Madness. A game that I've been getting requests to cover on Edutainment Month just absolutely forever. Like since I started. LGR, pretty much. So, uh, yep. Well, it looks like it's finally going to happen. Mickey's ABC's A Day at the Fair. <laughs> I've actually been wanting this because it's one of those games that does work uh, specifically with the Disney sound source. It makes very good use of it because it is a Disney product. And if you're not familiar with the sound source, it's a plug-in parallel port device. Works a lot like the Kovac speech thing. I've covered it before, and so have other people. You've probably seen videos about it. It's great. Sealed copy of After Dark. Well, it's been opened but this is after dark for windows dude check out that egghead software sticker i've never seen this rebate right here windows 3.1 version of after dark that makes me happy and last but not least we have hover force by accolade uh, this is one that i've always wanted to try out because it just seems kind of interesting plus that description top gun meets blade runner <laughs> okay yeah i mean hopefully right but I don't know if it's actually any good. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Man, what an amazing box here. Thank you so much. All right, so the final box is from Jake, but it's actually too big to fit up here. So uh, I'm gonna open it on the floor and then try to get the contents up on the table. Oh man. Unfortunately, it looks like the uh, base sort of shattered to pieces inside there, but so yeah. Here it is. This is an absolutely gigantic 21 inch Dell monitor with a Sony Trinitron tube. And yeah, there's a little bit of damage on the front here too and around the back, but I hope the internals are okay. Um, that sun monitor that I got last time ended up not powering on at all. So I was indeed looking for a large CRT like this. 
and it's a flat <laughs> screen and everything. This is going to be really nice if it works. Either way, thank you so much, Jake. This thing is a monster. All right, that's it for this month's unboxing of things you sent. Once again, a ludicrously generous amount of stuff. Thank you very much. And I don't know who sent that. Um, I found it while I was cleaning up. It was tucked inside of some packaging material. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there's, there's so many things here. So thank you to everyone who has sent stuff. And genuinely don't know how much longer I'm going to keep this going, though. I, it, there's too much stuff coming in at this point almost. So, um, yeah, I, I might have to cut off donations completely for a little while as I go through the backlog. But uh, either way, thank you very much for sending all this stuff in. The support is hugely appreciated. Whether or not you're donating here at Patreon or just sharing videos or comments, it's all great by me. So thank you very much. We'll see you in the next LGR episode in a couple of days. Thanks for watching.